good morning everyone so the topic which has been given to me are the three basic abstracts which generally talk about a her2 metastatic patients who have uh, brain metastasis the first one is the clinical profile and the outcomes for her2 positive uh, patients who had brain metastasis published in jco september 2022 uh, by the tmh group the lead author being dr prabhat so it was it's basically the state of our nation today and if you take up any patient who probably would be uh, treated in our india with a limited number of drugs which we have is this is what the journal outcome would uh, for a patient would be so it was basically a retrospective single center study uh, patients were her2 positive metastatic breast cancer between 20 2013 and 2017 the end points were pfs and os uh, the brain imaging was not done as a part of screening it was only on the basis of symptoms that they was uh, they were evaluated and they found to have brain metastasis and the most common treatment was a sequential treatment of uh, surgery rt followed by systemic therapy 102 patients were there one third were upfront metastatic because it was a symptom based screening so over, almost everybody had neurological symptoms almost 42 percent of the patients had five or more lesions uh, 19 point or almost 20 percent of the patients did not receive her tooth based therapy before they were diagnosed with brain metastasis uh, what was interesting to be seen was between the patients who received her tooth therapy and, were, and, the, and the patients who did not receive her tooth therapy there was no difference in the onset of brain uh, onset of brain metastasis so this is something which probably will not get it from anywhere else because this is uh, this is a uh, this is the outcome which probably this study had given us now uh, the most common systemic therapies were capelapatinib trastuzumab tdm1 and uh, trastuzumab plus lapatinib the median pfs was 8 months and this is important to remember because subsequent studies will be focusing back on it so median pfs was around 8 months median os was 14 months the two year old survival was 25% the median, PF, median PFS with capelapatinib was around 9 months. Uh, the leptomeningeal disease showed a PFS of around 8 months and OS of around 19 months and it kind of proved that intrathecal trastuzumab works. The second study is the tuxedo trial which basically is a proof of concept that TDXT works in, inter, in active brain metastasis. Uh, I'll take you through the study now. So uh, what we know as a background is, uh, which was published in NEGM, the Destiny Breast 03 study did show that Patients who had treated stable brain metastasis had an intracranial response rate of around 64%. This study was designed to evaluate the effect of TDXT in active brain metastasis and was also designed to show that there is a proof of intracranial activity of TDXT and also to see if the radiation can be avoided in such a patient. So it's a prospective open label single arm phase 2 trial. The enrollment was for a year between July 2020 to July 2021. 15 patients were enrolled. 60% had undergone previous local therapies and had progressed thereafter with a median duration of 13 months. 60% had received TDM1 in the background. So it is basically most of the patients had received the standard THP combination. After that, 60% had received TDM1 was allowed and the primary endpoints were overall response rate based on the RANO-BM criteria. The other was clinical benefit rates, PFS, OS and safety. What was seen is that the number of patients were 15 uh, how is it different from what we studied previously was major because all of the patients were screened so almost 60% 60, 60 had no uh, neurological symptoms of the baseline. Majority of the patients were luminal B HER2 positive and almost everybody had received the THP combination in the background. So what was seen was 2 out of the 15 end up having a CR, 9 of the 15 had partial response. In the subgroup analysis it was seen that the patient who had de novo brain metastasis had a response rate of 100% we serviced 67% of the patients in who had progressed after receiving local therapy. Uh, the PFS was 14 months and now consider this 14 months PFS and compare it to the 8 months PFS which we had in the TAT which we know as a real world data now and that is when the patients were given RT plus systemic therapy both and now we have a drug which has increased the PFS to around 14 months and the median OS is not reached. Uh, the clinical benefit rate is almost in the range of 90-95%. Uh, the safety, uh, among the, the most common adverse effects were the, uh, were the hematological, ad, hematological adverse effects and uh, I think two patients had uh, ILD grade 1. The last abstract is the tocotinib versus the uh, basically the HER2 climb, uh, HER2 climb study which we understand now. So it was basically the final updated overall survival analysis. So we all are aware about the HER2, HER2 design trial, patient had received THP in the past, TDM1 in the past and they were randomized to tocotinib plus trastuzumab plus capecitabine with service placebo plus trastuzumab plus capecitabine. There has been some criticism of this trial basis that clepatinib was not added in the control arm 
well the authors had a had a feedback to it this they kind of felt and they kind of justified it by saying trastuzumab plus capecitabine works equally well as lip, uh, lipatinib plus capecitabine and they had their reasons to go ahead with this so the initial background the background was the initial results were published in NAGM at a median OS of 14 months this is an update analysis at the end of another 15 months that is a total of around 30 months MRI brain was required on everybody all on all the patients the brain metastasis was present in almost 50% of the patients in both the control as well as the treatment arm. The patient had received median four lines of prior therapies and three lines once they had metastasized. What was seen was a patient, uh, patients ended up having 7.6 months of PFS, uh, which was there in this updated analysis compared to, and it was almost similar to what was seen almost uh, in uh, 15 months back in which the PFS was around eight months. The overall survival was around two years and it was slightly improved from the previous OS which was reported around 22 months in the, uh, in the last uh, results which are presented. Now coming to the subgroup analysis and this is where uh, Tukatnib has a lot of interest. So the median time from the first diagnosis to brain metastasis was almost similar to what has been seen in the Tata study, what has been seen in the TDXT study. That's somewhere around 14 to 15 months. 60% of the patients in the Tukatanib her 2 climb study had active brain metastasis. And they had used RESIS criteria, not the RANO-BM criteria to measure. Now this is, a, this is a subset analysis which has been presented in the JCO, which gives you the activity of Tukatanib in all patients who had brain metastasis. The PFS is around 9.9 .9 months and the overall survival is around 18 and a half months. If you look at the patients who had active brain metastasis, the CN, the PFS, the CNS PFS is around nine and a half months and the overall survival is around 20.7 months. So this brings in the fact that what is the requirement of doing radiation in patients when you have such amazing response rates and such amazing performance uh, PFS survivals. So the comments is in a HER2 positive almost, fifth, almost half of your patients will develop, risk, uh, will develop brain metastasis and you will irradiate them and in six to 12 months they will progress further. Now we buy Logic understand that most of the TKIs they have a good, uh, you know, brain penetration. But when the patients develop brain metastasis, it's the ADC, ADCs and MABs, they also tend to permeate into the brain. And there has been an incremental benefit of anti uh, uh, incremental benefit of, uh, you know, giving these anti HER2 therapies. So it all started with trastuzumab and then we have, you know, uh, built upon uh, from there. So trastuzumab, the Rista study had shown that if you give trastuzumab, the OS was 17.5 uh, months versus 3.7 months otherwise. It was uh, with a TP, the overall intracranial overall response rates were around 52%. The overall survival was 20 months. And this was uh, for the patients who had not received any other or any previous therapies. With the TDM1, the overall response rates were in the range of around 22%, with the overall survival of around 19 months after brain metastasis. In the Latscape study had shown that 66% had an overall response rate with the PFS around five and a half months. Now coming to, coming to the basic questions is, should we be doing a MRI, screening MRI for all the brain metastatic patients? This is what we are coming to. So I think this is at the cusp where, you know, similar to the lung, similar to the lung where once osimertinib came into the picture and we started not treating the brain metastasis and started developing, depending upon our osimertinib to work in, a, in the brain and, you know, to take away the radiation altogether. I think this is where the cusp of uh, metastatic breast cancer is. Should we be doing a MRI screening in every patient? I don't think we are there yet because we do not have the answer whether we'll, we'll be changing our initial systemic therapy at all and what will we be doing to the asymptomatic small metastasis if we find them. So these are the basically questions which we need to further work upon. Thank you.